Hi, I'm Kel Olche, Graduate Program Director in Orthodontics at the University of Florida. This video is a short summary of our paper, Agreement Between the Ideology of a Class II Male Occlusion and Its Effects on Treatment Approach. It appears in the January 2012 issue of the aligned version of the AJODO. A few years ago, we as well as other institutions conducted a randomized clinical trial examining the timing of class II treatment. The results were a bit controversial, and many orthodontists challenged them. The critics suggested that one of the many shortcomings of our randomized clinical trial was a disregard of the etiology of class II malocclusion. Many factors go into determining the etiology, and some of these factors are very subjective. The purpose of this study was to determine if orthodontists from around the country can agree on the etiology of the class II malocclusion and its treatment What approach. we did was to send initial orthodontic records of 159 subjects to eight orthodontists at various academic institutions. Within the set of 159 records, the records of 18 subjects were duplicated and peppered throughout the sample randomly. Along with the records, we sent a questionnaire to be completed for each patient. The questionnaire included questions aimed at pinpointing the etiology of the class II male occlusion, such as if it was a skeletal or dental problem, and which jaw was at fault. We also asked if early treatment was necessary. The return responses were analyzed and a kappa value was determined. The interpretation of the kappa score is as follows. If it's between 0 and 0 0.2, there's slight agreement. If it's between 0.81 and 0.99, there's almost perfect agreement. What we found was that intra-rater agreement which is based on the results from the duplicated subjects within the sample, show that overall the raters were consistent with themselves 65% of the time when determining the type of malocclusion the subject possessed, 6% of the time when deciding which arch was at fault, and 81% of the time when determining the need for immediate orthodontic treatment. The kappa score was 0.48 for the raters determining the type of malocclusion detected, 0.43 for the raters determining which arch was at fault, and 0.55 for the rater determining which, whether or not phase two treatment was necessary. When determining the need for immediate treatment, the investigators had substantial agreement within themselves with an overall value of 0.62 among the raters. When determining difficulty of each case, the investigators had fair agreement. What do these results mean? What they mean is that there is a significant amount of subjectivity when diagnosing the etiology of a class II malocclusion, making it difficult to be consistent within oneself, much less among each other. This can be due to the fact that no guidelines and supplementary tracings were given. These inconsistencies have also been attributed to the diversity in training background and lack of established practice guidelines. In other words, there are many ways that a dental class II malocclusion can be corrected. In conclusion, this study showed that practitioners cannot agree when determining the etiology of a group of class II subjects, and to suggest that the results from the class II study are not valid is unwarranted. Thank you.